Hello. Hi. Uh, actually, it's quite a turnout, quite impressive. I mean, I'm a lawyer talking about legal issues right after lunch, and there are so many people here. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have about 20 minutes. I'll just give you a real short introduction to what is e-privacy. We'll talk a little bit about e-privacy. We'll talk about data protection. We're going to talk about what is a topic for you with an app development, what are the points you have to obey. And like in the introduction, I said, not to obey privacy by design and not to obey privacy by default will not be an option for app development in the future. We will get back to that in about 15 minutes. First, I think a lot of you haven't heard about CMS, so I'm going to introduce um, us for a short moment. We are an international law firm. We are about 5,000 lawyers all around the world with about a staff from about 7,000. Um, when we look, we, so we cover actually most of the world. We are in, our offspring was back in the 90s and 80s in the UK and Germany, then expanded all over Europe and now covering especially the Middle East. Asia, Africa, and South America. North America is still a topic. We are not there yet, but we will get there. So that's so much for me. I'm uh, working in the Leipzig and Berlin office of CMS, Hasha Siegler, within the IP and IT. My main focus is data protection, privacy, and trademark. Um, and two, of, two out of three I will be talking about now, data protection and privacy. Where's the need for privacy and data protection coming from? About seven years back, eight years back, when I started working as a lawyer, and you were said you were working in, uh, you were working in data protection, everyone was looking at you like, OK, what are you doing? Nobody cared about data protection. Since then, two things have changed radically. The first is the technology. Eight years back, 10 years back, there wasn't smartphones. Apple, um, I know I'm at an Android conference, but the Apple App Store opened 2007 that's just 10 years back. So with the increase of technology and the speed of technology increasing and all the connection, all those variables, all those smart devices, all those stuff happening around within the last 10 years put a whole push into privacy issues. Because at this moment, we are technology at a point where you can access everything that you have on your smartphone from everywhere. Problem is, everyone else can too. And this gave Edward Snowden was the second issue that put privacy forward. With him, he revealed what was possible, how technology could be used, and what the issues were, not only from the authorities, but also from companies. Those two issues pushed, put privacy and data protection back on the map. And if we look at numbers today, um, about 90 percent of people, those numbers are from 2017, are actually worrying about privacy when using online technologies. So it will be an actual economic factor for you as app developers to think about privacy issues because a lot of people are worrying about those points when thinking about which technology will I use, which technology will I buy, how much data will I give. And 50% are actually very concerned about that one. So keep that in mind. We are not talking about just legal issues here. Those are relevant economic factors. Um, now you're worrying, I'm not doing any app with privacy, so do I have an issue? Is privacy an issue for me? Or don't I have to care about anything of, about that one? There's one simple question you have to answer yourself. Do or does my air does my app collect, share personal data? Mm, think, thinking about it, I don't know. What is personal data? For us lawyers, personal data can be a really a lot of things. It can be, which is obvious, a first and a last name. It can be an email address. It can be a telephone number. And now come the fun things. It can be location data. It can be uh, analytics data, it can be an IP address, it can be a mobile subscriber identity, it can be a mobile subscriber number, it can be a biometrical number, even just the name of a phone. You know, when you use your smartphone or something like that and you name it, this data can be personal data. So, because the definition of personal data in a legal sense is it has to be identify a person or a person have, has to be identifiable through the data in combination with other data. 
So even if you just have a device number, but you can combine it with a telephone number and combine this telephone number with a name, you have a personal data. So I think it is clear to say that every app developed, used, and stored will have a privacy issue. Um, because of that definition that a person just needs to be identified or identifiable. And if in any reason you, the app you're, you are creating, the app you are using, can does that, uh, sorry, uh, does that, can identify or identifiable a person and using this data, you have a privacy issue. And you have then to think about those privacy laws around the world. Um, around the world, it's something I'm just will be talking about EU and German private law. I'll not be talking about any other private law because I can't do that. I'm a German lawyer. I have a, a, an understanding of German law and I have an understanding of European law. I don't have an understanding of US law or Korean law or anything else. We have other people for that. So just European law and German law. What is the legal framework within Europe? You have to be uh, differ two relevant subjects. First of all, we have the general data protection laws. We, uh, in Europe, it is a general data protection directive. Within Germany, it's what you call the Bundesdatenschutzgesetz. These are the basic data protection laws you have to check if you are working in the sector. And now come two points. If you remember those two, I'm I'm glad because that's all I want to tell you about. Um, those data protection laws comprise any processing of personal data. Everything you do with personal data is comprised by these laws. It doesn't matter how little you use data, if you just share it or if you, or if you just reuse it. Everything you do is comprised. And then as a second point, everything is prohibited unless allowed by law or you have a consent of the user. The main point for the allowed by law is the such called contractual needs. What is a contractual need? If you sell your app to me, I'm your user, you sell me your app, I n you need my personal data to bill me. Sure, otherwise you couldn't get the money. Um, but if it's a one-time payment, you just need those data one time, after that you need to delete it. If, you, if it's in subscription model, you need my personal data every month. So the use of this personal data is allowed because of a contractual need, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to use your app. But to analyze my data, to combine my data with other data to see when I'm using your app. Am I using your app more in the morning or am I using it more in the evening? Am I using it when I'm staying at home or if I'm on the road? All those analyzing of data is not a contractual need and therefore not allowed by law. You will need, in a legal sense, a consent by the user to do so. And the last point is, those rights of users that you need a consent for cannot be waived in a contract. That's something different from US law. There is no waiver concerning personal rights within the European Union. On the other hand, those are the general rules. But we have also a little special rule that's called the e-privacy directive. That's actually the mobile and um, the internet-based data protection rules, that, which comprises the use of personal data, especially within mobile devices and within mobile data traffic, and it comprises things like tracking and especially the, the use of cookies. Why is the cookie so important? Those e-privacy directive was first issued in 2002, so the technology, they're thinking about an internet from 15 years ago, um, and cookies was then the big thing. Uh, and this will change in the future, I'll come to that in a minute. Those e-privacy directed will get an update which will be actually kind of a game changer for uh, the mobile industry. At the moment, we have those cookie issues, you know, you have to click on a website and there's yes, we accept cookies, that's a law, that is a legal issue you have to do now. So that's the legal framework actually at the moment. 
what will change within the next year because we are going through some radical legal changes within the next year. First of all, we're going to have a new general data protection regulation. The European Union will have one data protection law for all member states. So there won't be a difference if you're based in England, if you're based in Spain, if you're based in France, or if you're based in Germany. All European member states will have the same data protection rules. For German data protection rules, not so much will change. It's, it will still see, uh, be the same. Everything is prohibited unless allowed by law or um, you have a consent of the user. Here are three, four points that will nonetheless be from interesting for app developers. First of all, we have an, an increased territorial scope, meaning in our days, this will be enforced from May next year. Um, if you are now based in Russia, if you're based in the US, and if you're or based in Africa, and you're offering your services here, there may be a possibility that you can evade European data protection laws. That will not be possible within the future, because in the future, it will be if you offer your services in the European Union, you are bound by the law of the general data protection regulation. Otherwise, you will not be able to offer your services here. So this will be a change for every company based outside the European Union, because you now, you now will have to obey European Union law. The second is, every user of you will have the right to be forgotten. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't just mean you have to delete all the data of the user. You actually have to construct a state where it is like the user never registered with you. you. You're not allowed to keep any information on a user if I delete my contract with you and say, please forget me, I was never here. Third one is, and that's just a legal issue. Actually, no one has any idea how to do that on a technical level. Maybe someone here has. There will be a right to data portability, meaning if I, have a, if I as a user change a platform, it must be possible that I take my personal data with me from one platform to another. So, in the end, actually, it would mean if I change from Amazon to another online shop, I maybe have to take my data from Amazon with me. No idea how this, how this should work. We don't have a standard. No one has any ideas, but it will be the law up, there, up next year. And the, and the last thing is, we're going to have massively increased fines. Uh, at the moment, if you are found guilty of data protection violation, the maximum fine will be around 300,000 euros for one violation. That will be the massive, also, this would be the uh, maximum fine at the moment. Uh, starting May next year, the maximum fine will be 20 million, dollar, uh, 20 million euros per violation. So this can be really, really nasty for companies and even for small companies. And this is what I meant when I was talking about, okay, here will be a game changer for mobile industry. Next year, we also will have a new iPrivacy regulation that will change the law from 2002. It's not final yet, it's, it's still in discussion, but a few points are clear that will become um, in force. First of all, privacy by design and privacy by default will not be mandatory anymore. If you release an app, if you release a device, it first of all must be designed to minimize data use, privacy by design. And if you allow different settings for a user, the default setting must be the most data sensitive setting possible, privacy by default. Those will not be nice to have things, those will be the standard. Then um, it will change the laws on tracking and it will change the laws on uh, the use of metadata and uh, browser, uh, browser tracking. Uh, at the moment, a website is responsible. If a user uses a do not track option within a browser, the website is, repo is responsible to uh, respect that do not track option. That's why they don't work. Um, in the future, it will be the responsibility 
of the industry or the company allowing the access to the internet. The problem is every app allows an access to the internet. So therefore, it is your responsibility as app developers that when people say, I will not be tracked, you have to include technical options that they will not be tracked. So the, the responsibilities shift from the website to the access provider. Last point, data walls. At the moment, a few platforms saying, OK, um, you will only be allowed to use our service if you allow us to track us and if you give us your personal data so that we can analyze it. That will also not be possible in the future, um, probably uh, because they will say um, those services will have to offer a user another way to use the service without giving the data. Data walls will not be possible. This is what changes, and especially the e-privacy regulation with the tracking um, regulations will be very, very uh, interesting for the mobile industry. What to do to, comp to be compliant with data protection laws? First of all, give yourself a uh, privacy policy. This is a minimum content what should include every privacy policy should include. First of all, identify yourself. Then tell the user what categories of data are we using, why are we using them, if we are giving them to third parties, to whom and why, and inform the user that he has a right of withdrawal concerning his consent. Then, if you want to use the data for anything else than contractual needs, get a consent. If you want to change the data or do something new with it, get a new consent. Include privacy by design and privacy by default, and at least uphold your own laws. If you tell so in your privacy policy that you only will do specific things with the data, don't do other things with it. I mean, this, I know this is just best practice from a lawyer's point of view. I know this is not perfectly feasible. I know everyone else is doing something else. I'm not here for that. I'm just here to tell you this would be a best practice to do so. This is the worst case privacy policy. We're not sure which data we have. We're not sure what we're doing with it, but we'll let you know if we figure that one out. <laughs> this doesn't comply with any of these. So this is not how to do it. Now, what can happen if you use such a privacy policy? Um, actually, privacy laws can be enforced by your competitors. Another company can sue you for not obeying privacy laws. Chambers of Commerce can sue you for it, and especially data protection agencies. Uh, those have a real good standing within the European Union, and they actually can come to your company and say, OK, we now want to see what are you doing with, your, with personal data. And they're um, actually taking camp at your office and be staying there for two or three days, and they will, they will have a look at everything that you're doing. And they ask questions like, where are your servers? How are your doors locked? Why, is everything secure? Um, so those can be really, really nasty for a young company to deal with when you have a control by a data protection ag agency. So in the end, when you're now controlled by an agency or anything else, what could, what's the worst that could happen? You actually, the obvious would be cease and desist. That, that means your app gets deleted from the App Store or from the Google Play Store. And the data gets deleted. You get administrative fines. We talked about it. At the moment, 300,000 uh, euros within next year, up to 20 million. And up to next year, you also can be sued for personal damages. That means if I use your app, you misuse my personal data, I get a damage from that one, like, I don't know, I don't get a new insurance or something like that. I can sue you for this misuse of data and for the personal damages coming with it. That is what could happen if you actually do not obey privacy laws. I know privacy and data protection issues are really hard 
it's a little bit like herding cats. They're moving everywhere. You have no idea where they will be next. And there are thousands of things you have to care about. And this one actually is thinking, at least I'm not in charge of a data protection project. So this will be the final remarks. I know, kind of bold, ending with the Tim Cook uh, quote here, but mobile telephones are at the moment the maybe most sensitive object anyone can have. Our complete personal life is on these things. 20 years back, you would have maybe taken a photo and sent to a friend. Now you're using an Instagram or, a, or any other app for that. Um, at the moment, at the morning, I was uh, at the IFA fair, and there are fitness trackers all over it. Personal lives are completely digitalized at the moment. Take this responsibility seriously and take control of what you use with personal data. You can use a lot of personal data, you can do a lot within the legal framework, but respect this legal framework. And this is what I wanted to end with. Thank you for your attention. I think I'm in time. Uh, we're going to have uh, time for a few questions. There's uh, my contact details or write me on Twitter or anything else. Um, I'll be around for half an hour or an hour, so it's something like that. Thank you very much. Yeah, actually, I have a lot of questions, but, but I'm going to uh, ask only two. And uh, I'm a bit concerned about the definition of, about this per personal data. Uh, let's let's um, see that we, we are doing the project regarding the EMI and MC data. For example, if the phone are registered for the company only, so there is not uh, no any actual person uh, registered, or so to say, and is this email uh, number still uh, considered a personal data? Uh, do you completely anonymize it or...? Uh, this is just an abstract case. For example, this is not always possible to um, retrieve the actual person who are, who's actually using the phone. Okay. Um, <laughs> could be a gray area. Um, I have to take a shoot from the hip here because I don't know the whole case, but it could be a gray area. There, there are arguments um, considering the, sort of, uh, the anonymization of the data, um, but if you, do you have the possibility that when you combine it with other data you have, you can, uh -huh. uh, no, yes? In, this is just, just a situation that didn't really happen. Okay. Because be I, I'm pretty confident about the email and the last name, the first name. There are clearly personal data. Yeah. But the email number is actually phone item, phone property, so to say. Yeah, but you can uh, reference the data of the phone identity back to a phone number or an email address. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And uh, actually, the uh, European Court just decided that an IP address is a personal data uh -huh. uh, because um, I have the right to go to court if someone violates uh, copyrights from that IP address. I can get the information from the telephone provider who, who was using that IP address at that moment. So, so, so this is, this is uh, possible, so this, it might be. It right. might be. Uh -huh, okay. So second short question is uh, like, um, how uh, how precisely is is this um, uh, uh, this protection defined in the di uh, UE directive, and how need, does it needs to be uh, further implemented in the UE countries? Because I'm I'm from Poland. I'm just wondering what is needed from my uh, from my state to be uh, this uh, this uh, protection fully enforced. Um. You would have to check with what you have to do under Polish uh, law at the moment. For German law, it doesn't change much within the next year. Mm -hmm. So check with uh, what, it, what you have to do with Polish law and then um, compare it to what you have to do uh, now under the general protection regulation of the EU. Okay, so what, what is the name of this di new directive, which is...? Uh, the General Data Protection Regulation. Okay. GDPR. Okay, thanks a lot. So in the EU, and particularly in Germany, we're pretty lucky that we have a strong data protection law. Yeah. Um, and you said that with user consent, you can do more than is regulated. Yeah. Um, and what I see is that um, you often have a construct that 
if, if you don't accept that contract, you cannot use the service. For example, if you get a new shiny Mercedes, you cannot yeah, yeah. do much without opting into that contract. Uh, that's what uh, those data walls I was talking about. Yeah. Um, within the e-privacy regulation, which is still in discussion within uh, the European Parliament, um, at the moment, there are prohibited uh, to use data walls in the future. So um, all those um, approaches to get data, actually, might not be uh, worthwhile within the next year. But this is music for the future right now. And how about the graded service? Like, I mean, um, do I have to get exactly the same no, service? No, 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 no. Um, at the moment, you don't have to get exactly the same service. You just have an option to use the service in general. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, OK, I'll give you a free candy or whatever um, if you give me a little more of your data. So there can be an A an exchange of personal data against uh, use of service, but let's see. It's still in discussion. It will be a point to watch within the next year. Thank you. How long uh, do we have? My, okay. my question goes more or less in the same direction, but in the case of a paid service, when you yeah. have to or you want to make some analytics to improve the service, you still have to provide an option. Do you still have to provide an option to use this without collecting analytics? Yep. OK. But then you can say, OK, in this case, we degrade the service to some extent. That will, from all we know at the moment, be uh, the way the e-privacy regulation will be going. OK. Keep an eye out. Just keep an information. It will be legislated middle next year. Sorry, we don't have any more time, I think. Uh, but uh, we can talk. Thank you very much. And in some minutes, another talk will start. <laughs>